Hey everyone, welcome back to another vlog. I, don't, I lost count. I think this is 10. 9 or 10. But um, it's been a while. I haven't filmed anything. I've just been doing things behind the scenes. I haven't had the energy to um, to film. But I have been working on some things. I decided that I am no longer going to spend any more money. I'm going to use what I have. I want to upgrade my my embroidery machine, my sublimation machine, and my printer, and I'm not gonna do it because I'm trying to save as much money as I can. Well, we are, my husband and I, so we can get out of here. That's what we've been trying to do for a long time, so I've decided to just use what I have and not spend any more money. But um, just to show you a few things that I'm working on, and the reason why I wanted to upgrade to another printer I wanted to get a bigger sublimation printer so I could use the one that I have now for regular printing because I've been making little samples for party favors. This is a chip bag and then these are for the juice boxes. And I have a few other ones. I don't have it on me right now. Then I wanted to make stickers to add to the little tumblers to go with the theme of the cocoa melon. And I found these cups at Walmart super cute so that's my plan that's the first one I want to come up with and then I wanted to make some little outfits to put in my Etsy shop like um, matching pants like joggers or romp not rompers um the bummies to go with shirts so I bought some fabric from Joann's I love these tie-dye looking ones pink and blue and then these floral ones these are great for also to make some headbands which I opened my second shop I haven't had one sale yet but it's been open for like two weeks now <laughs> about two weeks I'm not sure <clears throat> gotta give it some time and then this um bell bottoms I still haven't sewn I've had it here sitting here for I don't know how long I'm just updating you guys on what I've been doing and then I got an order for some hand towels, polyester, to sublimate on. They want Marilyn Monroe with her signature, so I have that ready. I gotta print it out. And then they, that person also ordered a mask, which I already did. This is um, Mortal Kombat or some, something, I don't know. So that's what I'm working on today. Um, I haven't had any other orders besides the party favors that I did in the previous vlog from this one. So. I haven't even uploaded that video yet. I'm gonna be doing that soon. This is a follow-up video to that because I don't like to do new new videos. I, I like just continuously like record myself doing whatever it is that I'm doing and just put it together. I'm I don't know how to vlog. That's just the way I'm doing it. But my computer is about to die. It's hot in here. I had to turn off my AC because I have my Heat press on right now and it's super hot so I'm gonna get this done so I can turn off um, so I can turn off the heat press and turn my AC back on so I'll check you guys later um I have the image here I totally forgot to show it but I already laid it down on my towel I have a piece of parchment paper underneath and then I have another piece of parchment paper I'm going to go over. I like to cut it down to size because I like to save because, you know, it's good to save money. So what I'm going to do is pick it up with the parchment paper. It's already heated. The, the heat press is already heated to temperature. I have the tape on it. Um, what else one I wanted to say about this? I don't even remember. The f phone rang and I got distracted. Um, all right, so the towels are 85% polyester. They are 11 by 18. I found them on Etsy. There were four towels for about um, with, with shipping and all. It was like came out to 15 bucks, but the towels themselves were four for 10. So not a bad price. They are a little thin. I'll show you here. I gotta make two of them. But this is 
what the towel looks like. I got four of them, like I said, for ten bucks. And I'm gonna sell them two for fifteen. It's for somebody I know. Alright, so I have the heat press at 400 degrees to, um, and the timer's at 60 seconds. So I'm just gonna press and hope for the best. I'm doing one at a time so I can make sure that it comes out um, the way I want it to look. If not, I can just do it over because for some reason with these printers, they use, I watch so many videos and everybody says to do the same thing with the settings, but the settings don't always work for everything with the um, settings that people are telling you to use. So you have to play with it. You have to, you know, figure it out for yourself. So that's what I have done because I tried it other ways and it was working fine until I changed my settings and then the colors were so dull and they didn't look the way I wanted it to look and then I just switched back to what I was doing which was just leaving the settings as is letting the printer choose what to do and it's worked so far since I've done that so let's see how this looks Oh, perfect. Okay, bring it down here because I want to pass the um, lint roller on it. This my lint roller? Okay, here it is. So I'm just gonna go pass it this way. But they look really nice. I mean, it looks really nice. All right, and that's it. So one down. Let me print the next one. I was about to print but I said let me just show you guys real quick what I mean so I go to print here and what I'm gonna do they usually tell you go to color matching and change this to color sync or whatever it is and then go to color options and play with this here but I'm gonna leave it as it is I'm not gonna play with anything what I'm gonna do is go to my printer settings I'm gonna put it on presentation paper mat high quality and mirror the image and that's it that's what I'm gonna change on the printer itself I did the same thing I put it on presentation paper mat and all you do is select print and it goes straight to your printer before you do anything make sure that you lint roll whatever it is that you're gonna sublimate on to get all those little particles out and also preheat so I'm gonna put it here for a few seconds I'm gonna preheat it like that. Just for a few seconds. Five seconds. That's it. I'll put it back down here so I can. Um, my tripod is broken. I think I have another one somewhere. My battery is about to die, of course, but I'll just want to get the image down centered. That's what I'm going to do, and then I'll get a sample made. I cut a piece of parchment paper, it's about 11 inches, and I just like to side, um, fold it in half and then cut that in half because that fits perfectly on my image. Cut it down the middle. I put one behind the towel and then the other one on the top. Lift up the towel and lay it behind it, right in the middle. for my image to print. Oh, it's printed. Now I'm going to cut around this image, take what I don't need, cut it out, and just go around it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just take as much as that white space out. my 
image and my ruler make sure that it's even top and bottom sides both sides need my glasses for this all right so it's about one and three fourths on this side one and a half on this side but I think that's okay because the way the image is and then make sure that I get it centered correctly Let's see how much space I have on the top it's about it's about five well four and three fourths and then yep four and three fourths and then I'll leave my my heat tape on all four sides so the image doesn't move and you don't get any ghosting on the, the towel like so now I'll take the parchment paper just lift it up the battery's about to die gotta switch it up I'll take my image my towel on it and my image here. Make sure it's covered with the parchment paper. I need to pull it this way a little bit. I feel like my voice is <laughs> just going away. Lay this down right on top and then we'll press. I switched my battery out under 60 seconds because it's still pressing so <laughs> I'll call her back that's my daughter she calls me at least 10 times a day <laughs> here we go remove this and then the image perfect now we're gonna lint roll again. Just right over the top. And there we go. Beautiful. Marilyn Monroe. I went to the Dollar Tree today and I found these sweet yellow cornbread muffin mix so i got two of them and all you need is milk and and a beaten egg so half a cup of milk for each and one egg for each so that i'll make both of them so two eggs beaten and one cup of milk and mix 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 and then it says to add it to a nine by whatever tray but i have this one so I'm just going to use that one. I already greased it with some Pam. And I got this big old bowl. I'm going to mix it in. I got this from Target, the dollar spot. I got this for my son so he can pour his popcorn. He's a popcorn lover. He eats it every day. But I'm going to use it today. Let's not tell him. So I'm going to put this up. I'm going to try this. I love cornbread, especially the sweet kind. I have a sweet tooth. One of my biggest downfalls. What can you do? So, two bags. So I did, and it says you have to bake it at 400 for 17 to 22 minutes. Combine the cornbread, cornbread mix, milk and egg in small mixing bowl and stir until smooth. Pour into the skillet or pan. Okay. Simple enough. So let me get a little bowl here so I can beat my eggs. I have here two large eggs. Okay. I also found these at the Dollar Tree brownie cake bar mix and then some chewy fudge brownie mix plan on making that soon 
need a fork. If you don't got um if you guys don't um, realize this by now, but I love being in the kitchen. Cooking is my thing. So here I have a measuring cup. I'm gonna fill it up with a cup of milk. This is a two cup measuring cup, so fill it up to the one. There we go. It's filled up. I'm gonna grab my little whisk here that I also got at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna whisk my cornbread a little bit. I usually make, when I make cornbread, make it from scratch. Like all the ingredients from scratch the cornmeal, the flour, etc. etc. But this will be quick. There goes my two eggs. And then we're just gonna mix it. So it's nicely combined. That looks about right. Don't mix too hard because you don't want it to be dense. Make sure you get all the the cornmeal mixed or the corn the mix I guess you could say <laughs> that should be good enough I think okay all right so I have my my dish here ready to go so I'm just gonna pull that into the We're gonna set our timer for 17 because my oven cooks it ahead of time, I think. Or well, um, ovens of different mind is pretty powerful, I would say. Just gotta watch it. There we go. I remember one time I made a mistake and I sold the wrong <laughs> and I had to totally undo it. I'm like, what the heck did I do wrong? I couldn't figure it out and then boom. It's like you get it. So so here's my what you call this? This is the waist band. So I have to get it even because I like to be I like to snip it 
so I know what my sides are and what my back and my front are. So this is, I learned by watching a lot of YouTube that this is one of the best ways and I have found it to be the best way to do it. Instead of putting the clips, because the clips could, clips are bulky. So I like to do that and then I like to fold it in half again, meet those two ends them together and then I cut the other sides so I cut here just a little snip and then I turn it right to the other side then I have four um, corners making sure this spread like that and then a little snip wait it's not right some reason this one's giving me a hard time but like that and then loosen it these are the bell bottoms but now we have to put these pants to take these clips gotta open up and like this this is one inside you can see them. So that's one side of the pants. And then this is the other. And it goes like this. And this is the front. You can tell because the back is always going to be bigger. And then you have to sew these sides. So I have to put them together like so. And use my clips so I can get them straight. And I'm making bell bottoms in case I wasn't clear. I don't know. I don't remember if I was. I'm a little bit crazy. I'm gonna get all my hands together. Like so. I'm gonna even sew. Evenly sewn down the, the pants on each side. And then we can add the bottoms and then the waistband. That's one side, and this is the middle of the pants, right? The crotch area. We get those together, okay? Like that. We can get more clips. We get my two ends here together. I'm gonna cut off these threads. Oh, cornbread is done. Be right back. So it looks like it's done. I inserted a toothpick and it's clean, but it looks so pale. <laughs> Let's see how it tastes. All right, so let me just keep on here while it cools down before we taste. It has to cool down. All right, so we did the crotch area. And on the other side, the crotch and here we're gonna put it together. Make sure it's even. Before we put a pin right there. And then we go down to the other side of the pant leg. And I'm not a professional here. Um, there's lots of people, Scandies, very seasoned um, sewer, amber, um, from Bing Bliss, I love her, she is my, I've learned so much from her, <clears throat> and uh, I'm so bad when I a few others that I watch, watch a whole lot of people, <clears throat> that's why I can never remember names. I watch so many people on YouTube because I'm a crafter by nature. I craft everything under the sun. If I don't, I'll be bored just sticking to one thing. That's why it really irks me when they say, oh, find your, ni your niche or whatever it's called. Like this is my niche, crafting. <laughs> I'm gonna craft. 
I'm going to do everything. Same goes with TikTok. I heard somebody say, oh, narrow it down to one thing. Post about one thing. How? How do you do that? Okay. Now I can cut this because I got to sew the, the waistband up here. So this is what my, if you can see that, this is what my pants look like. These are the pants. Now I'm going to sew the sides of them together and then down the crotch. So tell me, who else can relate to what I just said about doing one more than, more than one craft? Like, I do everything. If I don't, I don't know, I'll, I'll be bored. Even out. There you go. to make Sure, y'all screaming like hello. Boy, look at the mess I made here. I'm gonna try to cut it a little off. Do it over. So I'm not here. Just cut all these threads. I usually go over that. I said this is just practice piece. trying to figure out how to do the top part so and I saw the other day um I forgot how to say her name the tutu queen yeah how to say her name chachi or gachi gachi I think it's gachi she uploaded a little tiny snip of her making one I was like what a coincidence <laughs> somebody just asked me a couple of weeks ago for Halloween can you make this and I'm like oh, short track because I love taking challenges all right let's see if we can fix this let me put this down real quick let's pull this right out okay there we go now we gotta put this back under 
don't scream at me to put down the thing. I already know. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Alright, let's do this this way. It will be better. Go slow through there. Match these up. Covered from that. Turn it inside up. Yeah, it seems okay. It's not even, but it's okay. Alright. Now we're gonna cut all this stuff. Because we don't need this. This is a size. This size is gonna make probably a 18 to 24 months. So these are my bell boxes here. I need to match them up. The good thing that this doesn't have like a could I say like a pattern pattern. Like I can just so I gotta turn this inside out. I think. Let me see. I gotta put it over the leg like that. Let me see. So if I nope. Oh yeah. Unless I'm supposed to turn the pants inside out. Inside out, yeah. Instead of the let me see. Maybe this the way it is. Maybe I should look at my pattern, right? Turn this inside out and then match it up. Put it in, put in the pant leg and then this over it. And then we sew and then when we turn it around it's like this. I think that's how you're supposed to do it. Let me check my pattern real quick. I hope that air is not bothering you guys but it's too hot because my apartment gets really hot. Um, sorry. I'm borrowing a book before it expires. But anyway, so I, I was right. I had to do it the way I said. So my pants are inside out, and my bell bonds are the opposite way. And I have a pin to the bottom of my leg, one of them. Now I'm gonna do the other ones. So I can show you what I did. So this is my leg, pant leg. I have two seams here so I don't have to do my little slip on those because I already have that. So I'm going to match them up, those two. So I'm going to fold it over like this. Make sure that it's even. And I'm going to do a little slip like I did with my, um, what you call it? The waistband. And do another slip pick it up. So that's done there. I'm going to do the same thing with these. Now this one is not directional or anything like that. It's just a bunch of lemons going around in a circle. So I don't have to worry about which direction to put it. So I'm just going to snip four, four points. Okay, to even it out. So I'm going to do one on this side. And then one on the other side. I'm going to match them up. So I'm going to open it up like this. I'm going to match up those two. And I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite ends. So I'm going to snip here. One little snip. And one little snip on this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match it up with my pan. I'm going to put my hand through the pan. Like that. That's the bottom of my pan. I'm going to take my bell bottom piece and match it up with those little points that I just made. Simple just to keep it evenly sewn around. So I'm gonna take those two right there. I'm gonna put a pin like so. 
I find my next one. Okay, it's right there. But of course, I ran out of space on my SD card, so I had to <laughs> empty it up. But anyway, we wore me. So I'm matching up my little snips here. So this is the next one that I have to do. Let's put we'll get a pin. Pin that down. And then the next one is this one here. Get a pin. Make sure that's even. Pin that there. And one more. Which is right here. And I'm matching up those two. Let's see if I can put it up close so you can see. See those two little snips? That's what I'm matching up and putting a pin right on it. Okay. Now it's time to sew. I need to empty this up. So I'm just going to grab any part of it. Light it under here without getting my pins in the way. Oh, I should take the pin off this one and just slide that, making sure that it's even, like so. I'm just gonna slide it under here. I'm gonna hold it. Put my thing down. I'm gonna hold it like this. Put my fingers inside of it so I can get it even. So. Slowly, so I can keep stretching in it. Take this pin off, make sure that I got those two corners still together. Like so, still together. Again, take this pin off. Just throwing it on my desk. <laughs> Making sure that these are together. That the pants seems. Again. Take the pin off. And those two snips are still together. at the other end. So I'm going to cut this fabric here. I mean, thread. And then we'll open it. Put it to the side. Like Amber took. Alright, so that's sewn on. Let's see. We did a good job. And we did. We can see that. That's my seam right here. And that's pretty good. So now, we will leave that because we're going to hide that in our work. And do the other leg. Once you get it down, it's not hard. Like, it's pretty simple, I would say. Speaking for myself, you know. So I'm going to take this pin up so I can get this under the footer and then bring it down. Make sure my snips are together. Always make sure of that so it can be an evenly sewn all around. together Yes. <laughs> 
good on this side. And good on this side. Alright, so we got bottoms on the pan. I hope you can see that. Maybe we should just my heat press. Ugh. I have no space guys. Ugh. No space. The lighting is horrible. So they goes the bottoms. Now what we have left is the waistband. So this one we gotta put inside the pan. Well we gotta turn our pants inside out first of all. Oh both did a boo boo there. Okay. That's the front of our pants. I can cut this off. And then this is our waistband. And I'm gonna match it up this line here i'm going to match it up with the back of the pants so i'm going to turn it around this is the back of my pants and i'm going to put those together put a pin or clip i should say now i'll find my snips on the side right here and I'm gonna match it up with this side, side seam right there. So, keep turning the pants. Do the same thing with this one. Find my little snips, which is right here. I'm gonna match it up with this. One more. It's the last one. We gotta match up. Okay. And there you saw. Let's see that. When we finish, we just turn it inside up again. And this pack over here. long enough thread to hide in the work so it doesn't unravel when you wash. That looks good. I'll just turn them inside out. Okay, it's my fruit. Oh, that looks so cute. Let me just show you guys. Here they are. Aren't those cute? I hope they fit my niece. Because I just saw her not the um not so long ago the other day and she's pretty chunky. So anyway, these are stretched so they probably fit her. I made them for her. Her birthday party 
is tomorrow. So I made her these and a few other things. But they they stretch enough. Maybe they'll fit. I love those melons. Look how cute those lemons. So cute. Alright, so I'm about to make a a shirt, a pink shirt to go with these pants. With these bell bottom pants that I just sold up. So I want to make a headband with this. But then for the applique shirt, I want to make it um theme of one years old. Of course my battery dies in the middle of this. But I gotta choose from one of these. And I'm leaning towards the one in the middle I like. But I want to make the lemon yellow of course. I need to get some, find some green. No, I think that part is not applique. I think that's just straight up stitching there. Maybe, I don't know, I can't see. So, but the letters, I wanna make them black because there's already an outline of black on the fabric and there's already a lot of yellow. So I'm thinking polka dot black or straight up black, but I'm leaning more towards the polka dot. I like the polka dot. I wish um, you guys can answer me <laughs> real time. Um, but I think that's gonna look cute, All right? The lemon is gonna be yellow, the green, and then the letters will be black. Hmm. Let's try it out, see how it looks. So I am ready to um, post my new listings, and I'm so excited because I love the way the this little outfit came out. So I made three listings out of it. I have the bell bottoms by themselves. Um, that could be ordered by themselves or the whole entire outfit which consists of the bell bottoms the shirt and the bow and then I have also the shirt by itself that can be purchased that way so I'm so excited because I love this little outfit and um, I actually went and bought more of the fabric just in case I get some orders and I also picked up this other cute print that is perfect for the summer which I'm gonna make more bell bottoms out of and it's our uh, orange um, theme so really cute I can't wait to get those started I have to cut out my patterns because I want to make it in a bigger size and yeah so let's get this rolling I'm about to select all of them and hit publish and hope for the best <laughs> as I always say publish and then I since the bigger sizes need more fabric and I like to listen to what Amber Amber's advice and she always says to charge more as the sizes get bigger so that's what I did I have different prices for the different um, sizes so let me go to my shop here and let's see there it is there they are my three new listings are up now let's see what happens